Hello class, this is Mr. Rawls here with the instructions for the Earth History Lab for Earth Science. Today's lab is going to use a really cool app called Earth Viewer. So Earth Viewer is a free app that you can download in the App Store. I'd like you to do that right now. Um, so just the regular basic App Store, it should be free. It's called Earth Viewer, all one word. Um, and when you download it, it should be a pretty quick, uh, small file size. Uh, you're going to get an app that looks just like this. All right, so I could click on that right now. Um, and this is the view that you're going to see right away here. And so I'll talk about a few things with the lab. Now, one thing to note is that the lab instructions for the lab worksheet that you're going to work on is, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, so really the purpose of this video is to show you how to use the app itself. Um, Earth Viewer, uh, this app is actually really, really, really amazing. Uh, I cannot gush about it enough, as, especially as a geologist, somebody who studied earth science. Um, it's something that I really wish that I had when I was going through my undergrad um, because I would have found it really helpful. Uh, one of the reasons that I would have found it so helpful is it, it, it's really enriching. It includes a lot of uh, data that you can use analysis on, but the main piece that I would have used uh, is being able to go back into time and look at like just where things are. Um, so for example, like where was Minnesota 250 million years ago? Because one thing we're going to find out as we learn about plate tectonics and geology is that things are not uh, at kind of as they seem. Things move around over time. Um, the earth is really dynamic. We know that just uh, in our life cycles, how we can see the changes that uh, you know, between seasons, seasonal variation, and things that change over the course of even a, a, a human life cycle like climate. Um, but over geologic life cycles, the earth becomes entirely different. Systems change, they interact differently. Um, and so Earth Viewer is gonna do a really good job of showing just how that is. Some of you, this is gonna be like a one-time or two-time thing. We're gonna use this app and then you'll put it away and, and forget about it. But I think some of you are gonna actually find this to be really cool. I know that usually when I start this lab in class, uh, a lot of people just like to play around with it for a, for a little while. Um, and so especially with um, this lab being more of an electronic lab, this one can be done outside of class too. So take your time, feel free to, to, to play around with the app. Um, and my goal is to show you the basics. Uh, and so we'll start the basics by maybe just looking around our normal Earth. Um, hopefully, you know, you know, most of the locations and everything from world geography and, and just, you know, your basic education over the course of these 11 years. Um, the first thing that I'm going to have you look at, though, is this timeline, which is probably the coolest part. So let's look at we're kind of centered on North America here. And if I pull down on the menu... Um, you'll see the actual changes that are happening with our planet. So you see this, this inlet sea that's now cutting through North America. And this is during the Cretaceous, which is actually when the dinosaurs were around. So 98 million years ago, we're getting pretty close to 65 million years ago, which was the extinction of the dinosaurs, which marks the boundary between the Cretaceous and the Paleogene here. Um, so again, just another example of some of the functionality that's afforded by uh, this app. You can see how the earth is changing over the over time. Um, this view here, Paleo Earth, is the, is the latest 500 million years of Earth's history. 500 million years is a lot, um, but when you think about the earth being 4.6 billion years old, um, in the grand scheme of things, 4.6 billion out of 4.6 billion years, 500 million years is, is pretty insignificant. Um, but what is important about this time period um, is this is when the first forms of multicellular life started to show up on the earth. So really this view of Paleo-Earth could be called uh, the history of life on earth. So really quick here, I'm going to go over some of the very basics that you need to know to have success with this lab. And then I'm just going to let you basically explore and work on the lab worksheet. And so the first thing that you're going to do is click on the menu on the upper right right here. So if I click on that, what that'll look like is you'll have a charts function, a layers function, and then you'll have some information. You'll also have this graduation hat that has um, some, I think, some really good information on just basic things in earth science and geology. So, for example, if I clicked on the plate tectonics tab, it has a uh, 
entire like wiki page on plate tectonics. Um, we're going to learn about all of this stuff in class. So this isn't something that you're going to be required to do, but it, I think it's personally enriching. It helps um, build our understanding of earth science and earth history. There's video lectures and all of that stuff embedded in here. Um, but back in this menu, the things that we are going to use for this lab are the charts function. Um, in fact, actually what I'd like you to do right now um, is to click on the cities which I wish Minnesota, Minneapolis was, was on here, but it's not. But we're going to kind of treat uh, Chicago as our location in general um, as we go through this lab. So we're going to kind of pretend that we're, we're uh, in Chicago right now. And so when I ask you, like, what is the land that we're or the area that we're living on, like, um, we're going to reference Chicago as uh, kind of our nearest analog. Um, and then you're going to click on the geological tabs. Uh, I might have you click on more later, but those are the two that you're going to need pretty much right away. Um, if you go into the charts tab, what you can do is pull up graphical data. So if I did one chart, let's do two charts, um, you can actually see uh, graphical data over time throughout Earth's history. So if I scroll along the timeline, one thing you'll notice is that starting at zero, which is over here, so zero is today, we can go back in time and look at data so you can actually see this cursor moving across as we go down to, like for example, the Carboniferous Permian boundary. We can go all the way down, uh, all the way back to 500 million years. Um, so this is gonna be really important later on when we talk about, uh, especially when we talk about extinctions in Earth's history. Um, one thing that you can do is you can compare different sets of data. So right at when I, what I was just showing you was just two sets of temperature data. That was the same graph, basically. Now I have temperature versus carbon dioxide. And so you can actually see a direct comparison and maybe make some uh, or have some thoughts about does uh, temperature correlate with carbon dioxide in the geologic past? Um, so this data analysis is going to be a big functionality for Earth Viewer, but it's also going to be something that's important as we go through Earth science in general, uh, geology, climate science, anything like that. So you're going to use charts, and I, we already hopefully clicked on the layer tabs. The other important thing to do right now is I think it's going to be more helpful to use the map view rather than this globe view because it's going to be hard to get a sense. You can always realign by clicking uh, this button here so that the North Pole will be straight up. Um, but what I would have you do right now is um, click on this button right here, which is our map view. And probably for most of the lab, you'll be using this view, although you can definitely alternate if you want to get a sense of what this looks like. Um, on the earth and so we have our map view here now you can really see the changes that occur over time and we'll go back to to paleo earth later on now earth viewer has a bunch of cool stuff that we won't have time to use for today's lab so for example ice age earth talks about the coverage of ice from the last ice age um, and it's got a lot of cool data that's tied into that we might go back and use this later on modern earth is amazing modern earth uh puts together a lot of uh, climatic data. And so this is climate basically over the last uh, around 100 years. Um, and so we can, you can you know, move this to look at the temperature changes, but there's also a lot of data built into those, uh, those, that chart tab that we looked at previously. What we're gonna use at the beginning of our lab here is the ancient earth view. So I said that Paleo-Earth incorporates the, the time where multicellular life evolved on the Earth. Um, so 540 million years ago to present. This is 550 million years ago to all the way back at the beginning of Earth's history, uh, which was a period of time called the Hadean, uh, and it was about 4.6 billion uh, years ago. So one thing that I'm going to have you do right away is we're just going to scroll down to the bottom here. All right, so I pulled down to the bottom of the time lapse 4.6 billion years ago in Earth's history. Um, this is an eon called the Hadean, and you can actually pull up information about what that was like um, by actually just clicking on the word Hadean down here. Uh, later on with like the geologic periods in Paleo Earth, you're going to be able to look at um, the individual periods. So these ones right here, like the Paleo Proterozoic, you can click on those uh, on the Paleo Earth and find out information about like the Jurassic and the Cretaceous and the Permian and uh, the periods of geologic history after the formation of multicellular life. Um, but what we're going to do is for the first question I have you describe the formation of the earth from the beginning to 500 million years ago. The best way to do that would be to literally click on this up arrow here and you can actually go through the whole time lapse. Um, one thing you're going to notice is you'll see the formation of the first oceans, the first uh, crust, 
um, we'll start to see the development of the first set of plates and plate tectonics. Um, and you'll start to see eventually the movement of, of land too, uh, going from maybe more vertical tectonics to horizontal tectonics that, as we know it today. One thing you might notice, that was a little weird. Did you notice that? Let's go back. Um, we have a period of time here called Snowball Earth. Um, for example, this is a significant uh, geological event, which is why it's actually marked here when we click that tab that marked the geological events. This is one that got pulled up. Um, you can click on Snowball Earth and learn about what happened here. Why is it that the, the entire Earth just turned uh, white and snowy right here? Uh, I'll go back to the globe and you can see this is a global event that uh, was, I think, one of the coolest periods of time in, in Earth's history. Uh, something that they don't really, we don't really talk about a lot, maybe enough in, in Earth science classes. It's, it's a cool climatic episode in the history of, of Earth. So we'll learn about that. We'll talk about that uh, in this lab. Just an example of one of the cool things that's happened to the Earth in the past. Um, sorry, I will continue the timeline here. Go back to the map view. And you can watch the development of crust over time. So one thing I would suggest to answer that question is not just to do this once, but maybe do that a couple times so that you can actually see how things are changing over time. Um, and then maybe even just, you can you can actually drag and drop this so you can control this too to, to see the different changes over uh, the geologic past. Um, so... That's kind of going to wrap it up for this beginning inquiry into Earth Viewer. Hopefully it all makes more sense now uh, as to how to use this app. And really the big thing is going to be exploring it, experimenting with it, um, and hopefully learning a lot about the Earth as you go on. Um, the lab worksheet should be pretty self-explanatory for this one. So what I want you to do is start with this ancient Earth view. And then you're going to kind of follow along the, it's kind of, I, I see it as kind of a guided tour of Earth's history. Um, and so as always, let me know if you have any questions, uh, especially if you're having any problems getting the app to work in the first place or anything like that. Um, I hope that after this, for some of you, after this, this uh, lab worksheet is over, you continue to explore EarthViewer. And we'll definitely be going back to that um, uh, later on in the, in the course, because I think this is something that is, is very significant, very important. And um, I think it's a really functional and amazing app. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, this was our Earth History lab instruction video. Thanks for watching.